what we initially do is you feel for the medial rim of the, of the scapula. So the scapula, here's the bottom of the scapula, and I'm going to follow the medial rim up like this. At this point, it comes across and then runs down. So that's outlining the scapula. The next structure to feel for is the spine of the scapula, which arises here, runs across like that, and the spine runs into the acromion. So, and then finally, as we come down, so there I've outlined the scapula and I've outlined the spine, which you can feel running along here. So supraspinatus is above the spine of the scapula, attaching to the, there's a, a cup formed or a, or a, or a, a um, channel formed through here. It attaches here and the long length of the muscle is running in this direction. The first trigger is there, which is about a third of the way along the length of the, of the uh, supraspinatus before it hits the acromion. The second is here. And these two are where the muscle bulk, especially this one, is where the muscle bulk is most. There's a third point, because the supraspinatus dives in under the acromion, and where it attaches into the head of the humerus is a third trigger. The third point is the insertion of the tendon into the bone, which is called the enthesis. So the two triggers of the supraspinatus will refer pain out into the lateral part of the upper arm, and the, this pain will kind of dribble down. So lateral anterior area running down, which is the common place that people do. They put their hand, they put their hand over the top of, of like this. They wrap their fingers around and they say, ouch. You have a number of choices as to how you treat the, the triggers in the supraspinatus. The muscle is very easy to get to. So um, the first and the most common way would be to use ischemic pressure. And uh, what I'm going to do is we'll start with this trigger here. So the, the muscle bulk is thinner here. I put my finger or I put my thumb onto the trigger. I feel for it. I find the trigger by running across the long axis of the muscle. And I move backwards and forwards and feeling for a thickening which is sitting in a long, in, a, in a, a tight band of muscle. Once I find that, I'm looking at my patient's face and I say, you know, can you feel that? And he would say, if he had a trigger, yes, yes I do. And then I can support my hand, my thumb, with my other hand or with my other thumb. I push down, my thumb is on the trigger point itself, again, same principle, running across the long axis of the muscle, finding the tight band, pressing hard enough, is that sore? And then you ask, he, he, if it is painful, he let me know, and then I reduce the pressure until there's minimal pain, no pain, is that comfortable? And then I gradually increase the pressure, increase the pressure until always looking for feedback, making sure he's not uncomfortable and he'll let me know that there is no pain. And then gradually, and it's usually over about one and a half to two minutes, the pain, the trigger point itself will just melt away underneath my thumb. I'm supporting one thumb with the other so that I don't tire myself out. And also I have a feeling of how hard I press. This is almost a passive thumb. This is the active thumb. And I'm just gently pressing in 
with the focus, with my focus on in the tip of my thumb right into the muscle itself and then gradually as I increase the pressure I reach a point where really I can't push any harder and as I feel again I find that in fact the, the thickening has gone. So you've turned off both these triggers, this is an easy to get to muscle, you've turned off both the triggers with ischemic pressure. The final one, there is no muscle here, well there is the deltoid muscle but this is the insertion of the infras, of the supraspinatus into the humerus and what I do here is a, a different technique and the technique here is something called a myofascial release. So I have both my thumbs over the point and I make them vertical like this. I push down into his muscle through the skin into his muscle and then I push both thumbs together so that as I push my thumb tips will move away from each other. So I'm here and what I'm doing is I'm releasing the soft tissue underneath my th the tips of my thumbs gradually pushing in, gradually waiting, waiting to feel the muscle and the, then the soft tissue just spread apart and this normally takes about as long as ischemic pressure and you're just very patient, you're waiting and you're waiting for the tissue to just gently give way and this is a very very powerful and very specific release for t soft tissue which is in spasm. Once the triggers have been turned off the next step is to stretch the muscle out to length. But before we do that there is a third way that you can treat. The third way is to use a cold pack and um, originally the work of Travell and Simons she used fluorimethane spray but this is no longer available because it's no longer kind to the ozone layer. So what I do is I, I apply, the principle is this is a cold pack, I apply it to the origin of the muscle, I run the cold over the muscle itself at about this kind of rate. I then run it into the pain zone and down. I do two to three passes like that. The concept is that by applying cold you interrupt the, um, uh, the spasm of the trigger points. If you found this video useful and want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification bell.